You're listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Learn more at wearelibertarians.com. Welcome to the Boss Hogger Liberty Podcast on the We Are Libertarians Network. I'm your host, Jeremiah Morrill, and as always, I'm joined by our co-host, Dakota Davis. How's it going, Jer? Oh my god, it's episode 48 already. Episode 48, I can't believe it. I I feel like we've missed some time here and there. It feels like we just did episode 46 like four days ago. It really does. Uh, I I just can't believe it. Time flies whenever whenever you're having fun. Just like we sped ahead here. Our show is about our lives in rural Indiana. It's a show about the folks who are involved in politics. We promise that our episodes are going to be a fun and an easy listen. We interview people who are influencers, elected officials, political experts, and people we just find interesting. Correct. So this is something. It is. It's uh, it, today interesting people, exciting people, interesting. What, just, what have we got? You just, <laughs> just, <laughs> we're done Throw it. You threw the script over the table. <laughs> Paper <toss. laughs> You, it, it's kind of funny because like sometimes before we had the before we had the limiter, you would you would throw it down on the table and you could hear it. Yes, but it, now there's not going to be any sound because it hit the carpet. It's like the uh, like David Letterman when he did his show or whatever, and you know Dave would take the take the cue cards and just throw them behind him, and you get the breaking glass. It's like the end yes. of uh, it's a it's not PTI. It's uh, it's the one where they do the points. On ESPN. Oh yeah, so, loud and louder with Tony Kornheiser and yeah, <laughs> and Michael. It's, it's, the it's paper really toss. not. Yeah, this, this it's, is. It's really not uh, Michael Will. It's not. Uh, who is it? It's the other black guy. <laughs> around the horn. Around, the, around horn. the horn. Yeah, oh. with Stephen A. Smith. Hold on. So we got to do some voices. This is a here, timeout though. because we have we have to introduce the guest. Otherwise, he's going to be sitting here while we talk for another we thirty have, minutes. We have co-hosts and a guest. Why don't you take Correct. that part over, sir? All right, so today... I've deputized you. It is just... Handle this part. It is a person that we find interesting. Sitting in the in the third chair is a friend of mine from from whenever I was in high school. His name is Scott Fleener. I've been told uh, he wants to be referred to as Scotty, and he's an American hero. See, that's not, I what, that, not what I heard. Yeah, he is, he is a, a true, red-blooded American hero. I think we should make a movie. We should probably. <laughs> Boss Hog and Liberty's first movie. Our first feature film. Starring Scott Fleener as himself. So, Scott, if you are familiar with the We Are Libertarians world, uh, he immediately elicits James Neese to me. He's got yeah. the he's got the knit beanie cap. Yep. He's got the uh the polo shirt or not the polo shirt, the uh the, the it's it's a flannel, but it's more of a it's more of a checked flannel. I don't know. It's not it's not the heavy flannel that we wear. Hey, I'm I'm going to send Scott. I'm going to send you a picture of James Neese on your Facebook Messenger. Are there okay. real pictures you of him? I, I do I, have my phone. Yeah, on me. there are. Pull it out. Yeah, um, he's I, probably going to be offended. I want you to realize how offensive it is <laughs> <laughs> that, that he just said that about you. He's like our James Neese, the Boss Hogs James Neese. If it'll pop I, I'm sure that in your history, you've never eaten out of a dumpster. <laughs> or taken or taken a vacation uh, to to Florida where you've just tried to get tourists to to practice being homeless with you for a week or two. So I'm sure your your life standards are much higher. A little bit, but uh, in all honesty, James is like the uh, the most stable of all of the Weird Libertarians cast members. He's got uh, he's got a lady at home and two kids That's and a, sure. and probably a six figure job oh, at a public geez. school. So yeah. you know. But he, he does look the part. Rocking that vest, isn't he? <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's what you're missing. You're missing a yeah, vest. Yeah, we got to get you a vest. We do. You don't have any prison tats on your arms, do you? I have I have one tattoo on my arm. Did you do it yourself? Because James did his own himself. I, I did not. I, hey, I, I did. Not I homemade. You know the band, the Black Flags? Yeah. So he has uh, he has the Black Flags tattooed on his hand. Oh, that's... Yeah. That's pretty, awesome. That's pretty cool. It is uh, pretty cool. I think... Did he do that one himself? I'm not, I'm not really sure. I think he did most all of his stuff himself. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. So anyway, and that's enough about James Scott. Uh, glad you're here. First Thank of you. all, uh, so, you recently moved to uh, back to East Central Indiana. Yes. So, are you always from this part of the world? Or you? Really, uh, no, um, I was really uh, originally from Martinsville. Oh my gosh, you're a Bucktowner. I am. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, last uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, with Steve Horowitz's interview, uh, we had Aaron Ewart yes. on the show, and he's uh, he's a he's a Martinsville guy. Oh really? Yeah. And then my bride to be. Uh, she's from Mooresville, so she's you know okay. the, the Morgan County, and that the, the area. Part. Yeah, 
almost can be. She's you know pretty high yeah. class for Morgan County people, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> can be. Can now, be. Yes, Scott, they have, we, they have we, the Meyer. We know can be pretty well, don't we? We do. Yeah, that's actually how we met. Yeah, we. Yeah. Uh, it was at it was at church camp. We Na- did. Yeah, Nazarene the, church camp. Yeah, back what like five years ago almost. I think so. Yeah, we. Did, you would Point never know that. You would Point never of order, know. Chase. Why does he print the show notes if he's just going to skip ahead? Why does he do this to me? Just it's a false start, five yard penalty. What's He's that like mean? Rambo. He just goes off. He on just his own. goes. I do. I have to. We have to. We I, have to read it into the record. You haven't introduced me yet. Yeah, we got Chase over mm-hmm. here. Chase. Chase. Payton. Chase needs no what introduction. Up? Chase is a, a man on his own, and he's doing good. The camera is zoomed in on him, so everybody can see his beautiful face. All right. <laughs> so now uh, that Chase has been introduced, two weeks. I in just now. want to make a point that I will be keeping. Close eye on the the scores going on right now for the NCAA tournament. Yeah, so this is this episode. If you're watching on the YouTube or as we're recording, <laughs> it is Tuesday, March thirteenth. The NCAA tournament has begun. The field of sixty eight is complete, and Chase will be watching the scores and reporting live. Even though you're listening to a delayed podcast and you already know the scores, you can track along with Chase. You got that right. <laughs> <laughs> so two weeks ago, as we record this. Yep. The uh, the state of Indiana, we've had two Sundays now. We did a great... Two Sundays with liquor sales. We did a great thing, a great thing to, to the step towards freedom. If you've been listening to the show for a while, then you've heard every single candidate that's come through these doors. We've asked them, what do you think about Sunday sales? And I think that every single one of them has said that they agree with it. Uh, Melanie Wright was a little bit cautious because of the impact that it would have on smaller liquor on stores. On small businesses. Yeah. But uh, I think she, she, she said that it was going to happen, and by God, it did. Oh, two Sundays ago, everybody was able to go in and buy liquor, and the town didn't burn down. We didn't have people going to hell immediately. Um, no, that was close. Yeah. People does, didn't. Does, does anybody know how many drunk drivers there were? Oh, that, that's what my concern was. Rex Bell said there's no excuse for people to show up on at, at work on Monday. There are at now. least 59 drunk drivers. 59? And you have, you have a list of all the fatalities, uh, everybody yes. that died because we had Sunday yep, sales that for those first two Sundays? Three? George, Luann, and May. May. Yep. Uh, they didn't have last names. They were all like Cher. They're related. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, this is the same this crash. Sad it was family, like, a sad <laughs> family of Baptists that couldn't handle it. Was, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was kind of like in Billy Madison whenever the family is... Uh, in, rules. Yeah. A Doyle rules. A Doyle rules. <laughs> I feel I'm, like your whole I'm gonna family's going to be going at 20, down. <laughs> 22 years old. I'm shocked Dakota even knows what that movie is. That is my uh, that and Happy Gilmore are my two all time favorite movies. So Happy Gilmore is 22 years old right now. It came out yeah, the, in the year of your birth. Really? In really the year did. of our Lord. Wow. Scott Fleener and Dakota Davis were yep. were infants. My favorite part about that movie is when he gets in a fight with Hugh Hefner. <laughs> Not Hugh Hefner. No, not Hugh Hefner. Bob Barker. It's Bob Barker. Same thing. Yeah. Price is wrong, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that really that really gets a lot of hits on uh on Let's Make a Deal. <laughs> it's the price is right. <laughs> I love that movie. Gosh. Who's oh you? man, I could just quote the movie the let's just start from the beginning. Let's let's uh let's get Scott's hierarchy of the uh, of the hosts of the price is right. Oh it's is it Bob Barker yeah. or Drew Carey? Bob Barker. Really? That's not even a contest. Hugh Hefner. <laughs> We're the libertarians. <laughs> I, I feel like somebody has to take a stand for Drew Carey, who mm. is one of my comedy idols, by the way. You know, he's a good yeah. bit. Before or after he lost weight. weight. Oh, my God. Fat definitely, Drew is funny. Definitely Drew. before. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Dakota's well, got his Drew Carey glasses on now, mm-hmm. by the way. I do. If we shaved his head and put him in the Marine Corps for a couple of years, it'd be funny and have some jokes. It would be. I. That That's what we should do, Jer. Yeah, have you enlist for content? No, both of us. Like... I'm almost too old. I'm going through, I could be an officer almost. though. You guys I, I should have a bachelor's degree. Oh, I could be an officer. Okay, go, to, go to go to OCS. I'm down. I'm gonna be an. I'm gonna be like. Uh, I'm gonna be uh, be an attorney for the for the Marine Corps. Be an a attorney. Jag. Be a jag. Yeah. Be a badass. You don't even. You don't, you have nothing though. You I don't, don't have, have any working knowledge of the law. You guys should just do that little boot camp thing. I see a sign for you going down the road. Fierce. The women's boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's for Pilates class, Chase. Oh, close enough. So I think uh, that actually, uh, our, one of our co-hosts, Cade Coger, yes, his wife, Jade Coger, did the women's fierce boot camp. Really? Said it was great. She Loved militant. It. Did they that's have like how, a GI Jane uh, scene where they shave her head? I don't think so, but I know that's how. Her and my mother-in-law Monica met. Your mother-in-law went to boot camp. Yes, they both did. they went together, but now they have uh, come together and formed a kind of like a commune where they all 
pitch in and they buy gym equipment and they have taken over one of Cade's garages and turned it into a gym. <laughs> Good for him. Yep. All right. So we got beer on Sundays. We did. So far, halfway through March, nobody's died. Nope. From that. Three uh, people. Through Alec, okay, in, in Cade's account with no last names. The, the whole O'Doyle family, the O'Doyle's family has in passed Cade's away. In Cade's account? When did Cade get or here? Jade, Jade, Cade, Chase. I've done Breaking news, I'm not a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> Neither is Cade, so. <laughs> yeah, Cade's not a farmer, and you've got a bad heart, we've learned. So. <laughs> all, all right. So, uh, Dakota, <laughs> I've, I've noticed your truck the last couple weeks has gotten much darker. Yeah, have you have you noticed that? Did it's, you go out uh, and look at it before you came in? I really wanted you to see it. I don't know if you noticed it uh, before we shot with uh, uh, Caitlin Kupteski and Jess Hooker. I did. I'm very impressed. Uh, on one side. One side looks kind of shitty. You think so? <laughs> yeah, the passenger side needs a little work. No, it looks pretty good. I, I the Actually, I started on the passenger side. It was I felt like I told people that I felt like I was in the black and white portion of an infomercial where it's like, has this ever been you? <laughs> You're the most incompetent person yeah. ever who can't open a jar or everything falls yeah. out of the cabinet on that you. That was my difficulty. So I, I went out and I bought the window tint and I bought the kit. The window at, tint. At, it's different than a tint, Scott. <laughs> yes. And I, I bought them at O'Reilly Auto Parts, which, by the way, the cashier recognized me and said, hey, are you the guy that does the Boss Hog Liberty <laughs> show? <laughs> yes, I am. Hello to the guy at O'Reilly's. Yes. No, it was a, it was a ma'am. Ma'am. Yes. Really? Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Women viewers. High five. We do. Yep. All right. Not so sexist anymore, are we? No. <laughs> We're so in there. Yeah. Especially, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be honest. Since we had Jess and Caitlin on last week, our lady viewers have gone way up. That's got to be it. That was, that we balanced it out. It. And How that are has the really drinks? Helped. Oh, my God. No, I, so I, listen, I, I do like my typical, uh, if you watch the high quality YouTube video, I really enjoy my, uh, my vodka soda. Uh, always. What, what, what was your favorite? Made, oh man, uh, the whiskey sour that I I told mm. Caitlin ahead of time. Man, you got to make me a whiskey sour. I'm a big whiskey sour guy. Thank God she <laughs> followed through on that. Now, see, I wasn't that impressed with the gin and tonic. Well, they so their show. It, of course, when you go back and listen to it, you'll know. But uh, blonde and brunette, they mix these cocktails, mm-hmm. and you've got to push them a little bit. It's you got to let them do the fancy stuff. You insisting on the basic. I know you're 22 and you're just learning how to drink, but the gin and tonic. That's a very basic yeah, little drink. I'm, You've got I'm more of a pretty shooty guy myself. Yeah. If it doesn't have an umbrella, don't bring mm-hmm. it to Chase. Mm-hmm. I, see, I like the I like the bitters. I like things that are bitter on my on my tongue. Yeah. You know, once you start drinking some more, you'll you'll go more towards the uh, fruity kind. <laughs> it's easier to put down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get wh- <laughs> like the mangria. You get white girl wasted in no time at all. Hey, listen, I was in the <laughs> army. I know how to drink. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I I ended up going back. I, I tinted the windows. I came back here and uh, not like I'm. It's it's so windy outside. I'm trying to. I spray the soapy water all over the window, like the instruction says. Is like it the, hot soapy water? No, just regular soapy water. It, it just room temperature. Okay. Ideally, you don't want it to be 32 degrees because then it would be ice. It'd be solid water. Yep. Uh, that would break your window when you put it on. No, it wouldn't. Hit it hard. But I, I put it on the window, <laughs> and I, as I'm. I'm trying to cut it. The wind is blowing all of the extra because what they do is they put in in this roll. They you know, make it I have a garage put, and we're friends. I would let yeah. you use my garage and it would be 40 degrees and you wouldn't have a wind. Well, see, I was just doing it out on the street because I figured how hard can it be? And th- what they do is they put in one roll, they make enough to put two windows. So I have this entire extra like three feet that's blowing in the wind while I'm trying to cut it with an X-Acto knife. It was it was a horrendous experience. I I finally got it all cut though, and I got it taken apart like it like you should, and then uh, I transfer it onto the onto the inside, and uh, I'm I'm squeegeeing out all of the soap, all of the soapy water and things, and because uh, that's how you get it to stick, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm following. So I'm, I'm squeegeeing out all the water, and then I finally get to the point to where I'm I'm ready to roll down the window. And test it. Oh, okay. So I've gotten all of the the bubbles out, and it, for anybody that's tinted windows before, it, it takes forever. Like it takes forever to get all that soapy water out, and make sure that it's stuck. So I finally get to the point where I'm ready to test it. I roll the window down, and it just goes, <laughs> and it, it literally it was like a it was like a uh, a wedge because I had forgot 
to tuck it down into the gasket oh. that is at the bottom of the window. So it, as it just drove up, it was just, <laughs> it was like, whoosh. and oh, I was, at that point, I was so mad. So I just ripped it off of the window. I crumpled it up and I threw it into the trash toter. And uh, the next day, I decided oh, that was it. Be, that was the end of that day. Oh, that was <laughs> the end of that day. You like were pissed it, enough to be done. Well, it was starting to get dark. Okay, like it was. I started this venture at like four o'clock, <laughs> and then it started to get dark. So I was done. I was very upset. So the next day, I go to I go to a garage where there's no wind at the place that I work. Yes, and I have better tools, better equipment, and I got both of them tinted, and they look nice. they look professionally done. They the look the bags were already done, so you just had to do the front. Is that the deal? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, feel, I feel your pain. I, I put on like three different stickers on the back of my truck. It took me like five minutes. Oh. And there were bubbles and everything. Uh, stickers are the worst because uh, trying to get them square, trying to get them straight. Yeah. I saw that you One, got the uh, the Boss Hog sticker on the uh, on the Dodge now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. On the paint. You represent. invested heavily. I need I need to put it on the Tahoe, but I need, I'm going to put it on the glass. I'm not going to. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about paint. I'm thinking about getting it on the like a decal that goes across the entire back windshield. So our friend Christy Avery during the Gary Johnson campaign, he did or she, he oh my god. She his campaign, Gary's campaign had yes. the full glass sticker. Mm-hmm. Paid like 100 bucks. They had the design and they would fill your entire glass. It would be transparent for you, but it would be his it was like a white out logo thing. Mm-hmm. We could do those. We could have them designed See, that's what and I get Marcus to put them on our vehicles. That would be really cool. Boss that's all I'm going to say about it. Pictures of so, us. So, now that you have tinted windows, you can drive naked. Well, the, the windshield is still not tinted. Oh. Is it illegal to tint your windshield in Indiana? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. Matt <laughs> Pierce because... will tell us. Oh, just yeah. Google it. Nope. You're good to go. Oh, good. Oh, cool. Yeah, problem. Well, see, I because it is weird driving now with, the, the you know, the back window is tinted, the, the, the two rear side windows are tinted, and then the front two side windows are tinted and then you just have zero percent on the windshield and you feel <laughs> like everything else is enclosed but you're fully exposed in the front it's it's a strange feeling <laughs> oh we got sports oh, desk over there with chase i just got our first score alert radford beat michigan <gasps> Oh, 78 a, to 69. My God. Oh, my God. oh what Shocker. an upset. Holy moly. <laughs> Man. So that gives Michigan, uh, that was going to give Michigan the five seed, but now they don't have it. They got beat it on a buzzer beater. Man. A uh, buzzer beater. A, a nine point <laughs> game with a buzzer beater. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I don't doubt you. I'm really glad, yeah. we, glad we got to hear that live. Man. <laughs> and we're waiting on the final in the uh, Grand Rapids State, Mich- uh, Wichita State game. You've got uh, two minutes left in that one. We'll check yep. in in a minute. All That's right. Close. Score 69 to 69. That's enough about my, my tinting experience. We need to move on to the Scott Fleener spotlight. Hello. Yes. Sorry. Right. The Boss Hog of Liberty, James Neese. So uh, <laughs> you all uh, you all went to church camp without me, huh? We did, yeah. Of course, yeah. I was probably we, at my, my day job. You could have been a counselor. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been. I could I have been so making you run laps. Yeah. That... See that camp was pretty good. I thought it wasn't awful. It wasn't wait, bad. Okay, I know. I know Chase is a devout Christian. Uh, yes, yeah, yes, Father. Dakota is nearly an atheist at this point. You're an. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm somewhere in the middle. You're somewhere in between. I'm a heathen. Yeah, call me an atheist. I go Whenever, to a Quaker uh, church, Jeremiah. <laughs> How often? Uh, like every other week. From time to time, more often than I do, I go I go to the, your church for weddings and funerals. <laughs> See, about once a year, I got you beat. I haven't been there yet this year, but nobody's died, so it's well, I'm even. Three look, who, look who's going to heaven. Well, I don't think they go to the Spiceland Friends Town it's Church. Not what I heard, they were on the prayer list. That's true. All right, Thanks so so, much for so that. you're moderately spiritual. Uh, I'm agnostic. Uh, yeah, yes. that, that's fair. What uh, what kind of denomination was this uh, this church camp y'all went to? It was Nazarene. Nazarene. Yeah. You would never know by the by the drinking that we're doing right now, but it was mm. Nazarene. Sorry. <clears throat> Nazarenes are not okay with the with the alcohol or the the tobacco. Weird. Yeah. Uh, oddly enough, they were the ones that used to have the big beehive hair, right? Beehive hairdos, and that kind of got phased out. So I'm sure that in the next ten years they're going to allow drinking. That would just be my guess. Yeah, they also will the pants. Nazarenes will yeah. the mm-hmm. Nazarenes allow drinking before the state of Indiana allows medical weed? <laughs> I'm going to have to go yes. Yeah, a I'm, hard yes on I'm, that. I'm, I'm saying yes. Yep. We're going to have Chase create that Twitter account that we've talked about all these years for uh, for the Boss Hog of Liberty page. 
Yeah. And we can hold Twitter polls, and we may have to have that as our first poll. That would be good. Chase, uh, can you get that done for us in the next couple of days? Oh, so by March 15th, we'll have our Twitter uh, account. It's all set up. All right. All just, right. By March 15th, that's all we need. So we were we were talking downstairs. So vote, vote this week. <laughs> Nazarene's drinking versus Indiana medical marijuana. Yes. We have to get, we need to know the results, but I'm going to say yes. I'm going to go yes. with Nazarene too, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go medical marijuana. Really? Uh, yeah. I think we'll have medical marijuana within know. six or seven years. <clears throat> I don't think it's far off. We can barely pass uh, CBD oil without. Well, that's uh, you know. We I talked saw about some we talk, people. We talked that about church. that a little bit last week. Let's not revisit the topic. I saw no. some of the people at the church, and they look pretty thirsty. So that's true. You got to take that into account. Now that we have Sunday sales in Indiana, that when you do communion, they make you use real wine now, <laughs> or harder. <laughs> that's the truth. It's, part, it's in the law. I think it should have been. Law. I think it should have been state law that the only place you can buy your alcohol on Sundays is at church. <laughs> That would make perfect it sense. It would give them a revenue stream. Oh, great. Of course, it would be tax exempt unless Tom Saunders had a, has a choice in it, and then he would tax it. Oh, that was dirty. That was a whoa. <laughs> blow. Well, we love Tom. He's fun. But uh, he does He does want to do the same thing. Israel's is actually trying to do the same thing. I don't know if you saw this or not, but Israel wants to do the same thing Tom does, where the, the churches own these shopping malls and other, other things. And he's like, hey, we're not giving you tax free whatever. So, if you know, if they're going to change that law in, in, in Jerusalem... Uh, uh, you know, you know uh, Monrovia might not be not might not be a bad place to make the adjustment either. That's a West speaking side of, speaking reference of Israel. For you. you were uh, Scott. You were in the you served in the army. I did. Yes. Yeah, uh, for about three years. Right. About. He's skipping ahead again. Um, yeah. Well, you don't we, want to talk we, about we that. Much covered. We said Chase was douchey. That was written right in here. You thought Chase yeah, was douchey. I was pretty. Douchey. I want you to answer for what Dakota said about you. <laughs> I was pretty douchey, okay? <laughs> I always thought that I always just, thought that Chase was listen, pretty douchey. My favorite in high TV school. shows during that time were Jersey Shore, <laughs> The Challenge, <laughs> Teen Mom, and literally anything on Fox News. So that tells you anything, anything. on Fox News. And, oh, and I was the a religious watcher of Fox Big News. Big fan of Steve Ducey and Brian Kilmeade, E.D. Donahue. Are they, they your people? What was your Fox News that show? That was a little bit before our time, Jer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who those people are. Really? They're still um, on in the I like the O'Reilly Factory because I like. Oh, see, so you just didn't get her. up early enough. Factor, because uh, I like to argue with him. The O'Reilly Factory. Uh, yes. Sorry, I got that mixed up with the Fantasy Factory, which I also watched during that time. Now, see, I, I did like Fantasy Factory. He was that. a cool dude. Oh, yeah. Wrong Hannity and Combs. I liked Hannity. The late um, Alan Combs. He's dead now. I liked... Uh, no longer signing. I think it was Red Eye. I don't remember. Mm, I couldn't help it you. It was a late night show. It was on at 1 that, o'clock. He had a permanent case of It was pink uh, with Greg Gutfeld. Ooh, yes. Yeah, he was I'm funny. familiar with him. I liked him. I think he hosts The Five now on Fox he News might. Channel. Uh, most of those people got kicked off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch Fox. Ugh. I watch a Special Report with Brett Bear. That's about the only Fox show I'll have. I like to watch Sean Hannity because I think he's a, like a mainstream media version of Alex Jones. <laughs> <laughs> so slowly going crazy and he's gonna start we're gonna start seeing songs made out of out of things that sean hannity says all right i picked on i picked you on, on you enough for skipping ahead yep you want to get back to mr fleener yeah are you uh, any I'm relation to that. kobe fleener the uh, nfl unfortunately no no were you a fan did uh, you buy a jersey i i, I didn't you still don't have I'm one not actually a Colts Saints. fan you're not a Colts fan. i'm not he's a saint now oh really he is chase yeah. will tell you all about him Yes. <laughs> he, he, he plays for the Saints. He used to be a tight end for the Colts. He sucked. Huh. Interesting. Whenever I played Great football. Great job, Chase. Yep. Whenever I played football in high school, I was a tight end. Because I, I could kind of run. Are you a wide receiver now? <laughs> no. I, well, what, what it was is He's that I, I was kind of I was kind of chubby, <laughs> but I could still run a little bit. So it was kind of. You think could that, block, but then in an emergency, you could catch something. Yeah. Correct. So it was, you know, a perfect storm. So you uh, you spent some time in the in the army, son. I did three years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> ha- not having the camera on makes us feel like it was in the old days. You know what I mean? We were just uh, sitting at your uh, kitchen table. We do have the camera on. <laughs> well, not streaming. We're live. not streaming. No, this is we're trying something different. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. You don't have the. You don't have my mother and mother-in-law commenting immediately. <laughs> telling you, why you can't say that. It's plus, true. Plus, you guys are all like 15 years younger than me at this point, so I'm just having fun with it. <laughs> calling him son. Yeah. So, uh, the Army. Yes. He's more of a man than I am. He went to boot camp, okay? I, I, I didn't do that. How is boot camp? You went to... It really isn't that bad. Really? That's because yeah, you were I, in the uh, Army. And not, I mean, it's, it goes like... 
That was the a hier- low jab. Hierarchy, hierarchy <laughs> of, the, of the branches here. I'm assuming that the chair force is like down here. Yeah, it's pretty down there. And then, and then you say like army or navy somewhere in between. Bet, because I, you're in the army, you have to you say. Know, if I'm being real, if I'm being real, yeah. in difficulty with basic, it's probably chair force, air, chair force, yeah. navy, yeah, army. army. Marines, Marines up here, yeah. yeah. I yeah. bet they let you... My father's a Marine, so oh, really? I, I, yeah, I, I've been it, told... They, it is more difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I, I bet that they... Want, they you uh, want to kill yourself, as I understand. And yeah. Then, yeah. Oh, my. That, that's it's rough. Jurassic. You don't want to... You don't like it. I bet that they let you do drugs and yeah. alcohol in the uh, in their chair forces. Probably. I, I got that from a veteran, by the way, from a... I mean, uh, Scott Stansbury. I worked with him for a number of years. I don't like calling it the chair force because I have a lot of friends that are in the Air Force. Oh, I don't mind. It feels insulting. Uh, well... For all the the teenage listeners out there, we have millions. Uh, <laughs> um, is it anything like Call of Duty? No. Okay. Unfortunately. No, you kept posting it. So you were stationed in South Korea. I was. Yes. How long before that? You were at Fort Bliss. No, it was or Fort after. Bliss last. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you were you were stationed in South mm-hmm. Korea, and I kept seeing pictures of you uh, that you kept posting on there, yeah. and you. You kept posting a picture with a with an old Korean lady and calling her your Korean oh, grandma. Oh, that was her name was Suji. So, and I was in uh, USAG Humphreys, which is Central Korea, I guess. Okay, so and you weren't guarding the border. No, I was not. Okay, well that's good. And okay. then, whenever you left the uh, left the gate, my grandfather was a sergeant in the army, by the way, during the Korean War. So. You basically just replaced him. He's, you know, we've been out basically. for sixty years, and you, we replaced Sergeant Morrell, <laughs> Lieutenant <Basically>. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you went out in the villa a little bit, you would eventually reach a place called Suji's. And the person who went, her name was Suji, and she was pr- probably the nicest woman I ever met. That's awesome. I know. Whenever, whenever you had to leave there. Uh, you posted a picture with her, and you were like, "Gonna I miss do. my Korean grandma." I, I still miss her. <laughs> That's I a- go back just to see her. That's, so that's awesome. And the cool that thing is about her really cool. is she actually remembered names of everybody who went in there. So she be she called me. I tried telling her my first name, which is Jeffrey. I go by my middle name Scott. She could never learn that, so she would call me Scoot. She would be Scoot. Scoot. There you go. That's awesome. So what, what was it. the what was the Korean cuisine like? I don't think it was had... great. It's, so uh, American food is a little more beefier. Yeah. And Korea it's very lean, and they give you just enough to fill you up and. It's very, it's delicious. I'd have to have like four meals. In did Korea. you eat, did you ever eat anything like really really weird? So just to give you a few names of Korean dishes, the gulgi is pretty much the main beef there. Uh-huh. Then you have gulgi, which is a different type of meat. I forget which part of the cow it is. Probably the, uh, dog. the testicle. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> dog. Dog is gulgi. Oh, so I so feel you don't like want to stutter. I feel like there's been times where I was in a part of Korea where. There wasn't as as uh, as many English speakers. I feel like I may have ordered dog a few times. Ugh. If I'm being completely honest, I'll put myself <laughs> on that cross. I uh, well, I've had missionary friends before who have eaten dog, you know, and they say it's delicious. Really, I've heard, not, yes. oh I've heard gosh, it. Oh my gosh, that's really weird. I've never had it. It's big in Indonesia. It, it's not that bad. They would cube it up. They feel uh, fatty. I heard. They um, if you in the more up north you go, the closer you get to the DMZ, they actually have a. Uh, Farms for dogs that they use for meat production. Are we, are we talking kind of, like German shepherds or Australian shepherds? No, I what never think? got what, that close. What's the best production? Chihuahuas. That's something you can look <laughs> You're up. You're not I'm a actually... real farmer. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you tried to eat a chihuahua, it would just be like a chicken leg. Basically, It'd be like uh, leg. trying to get eat a bluegill. Yeah, you gotta yep. you gotta get a lot of cheeks. <laughs> you really to, gotta work for it to get well, the meat. Kind of like meat. a squirrel. Yeah, I mean, chihuahua pretty much is a squirrel already. Uh. Just a little yappy rodent. <laughs> That's not. It's not a real dog if it can be beaten up by a cat. What uh, What was your role? What did you do over there? I was in the uh, military police corps. Oh, I was an MP. You were the. You, nobody wanted to see you. Nobody <laughs> wanted to see me. Very uh, few friends. Dakota earlier we were talking. He talked about one of his friends who's in uh, Fort Bliss. He's like, "Did you know him?" I'm like, "I hope not." <laughs> yeah. He's infantry. I, I, you asked what branch he's in. And I said he's in infantry, and you said, "Yeah, we we used to run into those guys a lot all the time." So, <clears throat> it being an MP, you'd be like, you'd go out drinking with these guys, and then at the end of the day, you'd be like, "All right, well, you're all arrested." <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. I uh, Korea, like I have stories about Korea. I can tell you guys later. But uh, there was no the, uh, the camera's on now. Let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I can I can do one story if you guys are okay with that. I'm yeah. gonna speak vaguely. So in in uh, Camp Humphreys, you have a uh, a cab line, 
and curfew is from I think zero one hundred, so one one a.m. to about five a.m. All right, that's uh, 0500. 0500, yes. Yes, all right. Thank you. I'm helping. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, so we, during the weekends, we would monitor the cab line because no one could drive on post and everybody was drunk. Most of the time, it would be okay. Most of the time, people would just get in the cabs and time go. Out. So you guys are busting the people that are trying to be responsible. No. That are waiting we're, in line. We're there for a reason because fights break out. <laughs> it's a lot of people in the same place. That's It's a recipe for a fight. And I remember this one time. This this specific guy, I just remember, and uh, it started off. People were yelling at each other. We shut it down. Not a big deal. About thirty minutes later, it's this, this guy with a light blue shirt. I don't remember what, what his name was or what he looks like. I just remember he had a light blue shirt. Okay, and, let's call uh, him. Oh, let's pick a name. Let's call him Jerry Tad Western. Nah, Jerry. I like Jerry. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say Jerry. That's easier. Right, right. So Jerry was uh, Jerry Western. <laughs> Jerry, I, Jerry started yelling again, so I went back and uh, he was poking at this guy in the chest. I'm like, I, I, I break it up, and he, he looked at me, and he was like, you know what? I'm gonna take this from a PV too. I was a private, I was a private back then, and he poked me in the chest. And at first, I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing this right now. I'm not in the mood. And he's like, I'm a captain. I'm like, okay, well, calm down. And things start escalating from there, and he, eventually it's, there's like 10 MPs around him. There's there's a canine barking at him. And this guy, this guy wants to fight everybody. He was like, I'll mess you. I'm censoring right now. He's like, I'll mess you up. I'll mess you up. I'll fight all of you. Eventually we drag him off. He uh, he actually pees his pants on the way nice. <laughs> over to our over to our trucks. And we're like, the guy, it was a, it was a staff sergeant. I can't remember his name. He's like, you know what? I'm going to cut you a deal. I'm just going to take you back to your barracks. And you can tell your first arm what you did. So he takes him back. I get back on the road. It's probably like three hours later. I'm just chilling because it's it's curfew, so nothing's happening. And uh, he uh, we get a call on the radio, and they're like, "There's a uh, there's an assault in progress, not my area." So I was like, "Oh, whatever. That's fine. Sucks to be you. Sucks to be. I don't think anything of it." End of, uh, end of shift. I go back to the uh, MP station, and uh, I look in. I, I'm walking, and there's the uh, interview rooms to the side, and I look in, and it's the same guy. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> so I walk back there, and the desk sergeant's like, hey, yeah, you, you got to do paperwork. And I'm like, I know. So I'm typing the paperwork, and he's talking to me. He's like, so I was talking to this guy, right? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, you know what I want to know what he said? And this guy apparently was like, you know what? I'm going to mess you up. I know a lot of stuff. I'm a captain in a league of assassins. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll fight all of you. <laughs> so that guy always stuck. We made fun of that guy ruthlessly for like three solid weeks. That is that's great. You said you said that he's a captain in the League of Assassins, and my mind immediately went to uh, the Green Arrow. <laughs> <laughs> he was he wound up just being a private. He got slammed for a lot of stuff. I can't remember. I can't say all what it was, but so he, he was, was a just private a private? pretending to be a, a, a captain. yeah in the League of Assassins. In the League of Assassins. Yeah. So that's a, oh, Chase. You have any I scores? love that. <laughs> Breaking news: Duke just lost in the play-in uh, game. <laughs> yeah, what an upset! First game to North Dakota State, eighty-three sixty-nine on a buzzer beater. <laughs> the whole crowd was going crazy. <sighs> Boy, they are crying. Grayson Allen is crying like a little baby. Crying in North Carolina. I think Coach K just had a heart attack. Oh no! North Dakota. <laughs> North Dakota State. So, Scott, what was the North Korean culture like? You know, I the close, I can't, I've been fairly close to the DMZ. I was probably like a stone's throw away a few times. I never, it, I never really interacted with with them very much. I remember one time, one pretty interesting moment, I was uh, in the field training. And I was sitting there, not really doing anything. And uh, I don't know if you guys remember this back in, was it 2016? It was 2015, I think. I remember way back then, yes. They, they <laughs> They, uh, they, the South Koreans, <laughs> North Korea launched a missile into the sea, and then South Korea retaliated by playing K-pop on the uh, loudspeakers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was sitting there, and my battalion commander was right next to me. And I was I was playing off four, which is, for people who don't know what that is, that's the bad guys in the field. And uh, he's like, what is that? I'm like, I'm listening to it. I'm like, sir, I think that's, I think that's K-pop. And he's like, why are they playing K-pop? Why can we hear that? I'm like, I don't know. What is K-pop? It's a... Uh, Korea, South Korean pop. It's uh, you have to check it out sometime. It's just the uh, main music over there, right? So we're talking like, uh, dude, it's crazy. 
It's okay. insane. You have to watch it on your okay. own. Okay, bring me, bring me the aux cord, Jeremiah. All right, we'll, but, we'll riff while you do this. Anyway, the... I, uh, I'm assuming that it's somewhere between William Hung and uh, something worse. You'll, you'll have to yeah. check it out. It's something I can't even describe. Is it like that one song? We'll have something uh, to say. Open Gangnam Style? Yeah, Kingdom Style, yeah. yeah. Close, but not quite. Yeah. Okay. But there's nothing like K-pop. It's you so... have to watch it for yourself. It is It is a treat. Well, luckily, uh, Dakota but has I'm gonna, the But I'm going to finish the story real quick. The, please, uh, please continue. And um, I'm, I'm checking my phone, because right now we're in between uh, uh, lanes and I'm um, like, sir... He's like, yeah, I'm like, uh, North Korea just fired a missile into the sea. South Korea's retaliating. He's like, I gotta go. I'm like, yeah. Roger. That, that is a roller coaster of a story. You, I can't, I can't even believe that you were, <laughs> that you were in South Korea. I'd never even made that connection that you were it's, in South Korea whenever and you, then they did I, that. I wasn't there, but earlier on in the, uh, in the year, uh, North Korea and South Korea exchanged artillery fire and, I knew some people who were actually under the ar- artillery mm-hmm. fire when it happened. So, South Korea gets crazy. I was telling you earlier that uh, South Korea is very militarized. You can't... Civilian population hates the military. Yeah. They're very distrusting the military. There's a mandated any, any service. military or your military? Our military? Uh, military in general. They don't even like their own. No, they're not fond of right. They, they right. hate us, and they're not fond of their own. So, spinning the hits over here. we got Dakota Davis, and this is going to be... Well, I, you gonna give us this one, DJ Cody? Yep, I'm gonna. Give this you is this gonna one. be. This is a, this is number nine in the Ring top ten. Ring Ding Dong from 2009 of the top 100 or top ten pop there we songs. K cups. You have to watch it though. It's part K-Cups. of K cups. It's K cups by Keurig. There we go. Shiny. <laughs> All it takes is a few seconds of this boy band to get your body moving. This is... <laughs> it looks <laughs> like... Air, Yu Yun Jin, um, Ding Dong, focuses on the familiar concept of good girls and bad boys. The lead singer looks exactly... The butterflies in both the song and video, Shiny will turn their <laughs> you know, way right should, uh, your The lead singer of this song looks, looks just exactly heart. like... Uh, Rufio from Hook. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, Dante. You guys, Dante you, guys should make a, uh, you guys should make a Boss of Hogs uh, K-pop song. Oh, we really should. It's kind of like in I, I, I'm 99% sure that that uh, K-pop is all about the music video. It, it is. It is. It's very visual, so your viewer, your your listeners need to actually look up K-pop and watch it because it's very visual. We oh, have yeah. so many unknown unknowns, uh, un, un, incomplete projects uh, for the Boss Hog side. That we're working on talking about in the hopper. Let's add a music video to that list. <laughs> We've already got the movie yeah. of Scott Fleener, American Hero, starring yeah. Scott Fleener as himself. Yes. yes. But we and, and now uh, we're going to add a K-pop song. And we're going to add a K-pop song. So all right, let's I like ta- that. Let's talk about movies, Scott. Okay. As, a, as the army veteran of the room. Yeah. All these army movies. What's <laughs> the most accurate? You know, I, I, I need to say that I'm, I've never been to combat, so I can't <laughs> say 100%. Yeah, but I not know, just like combat, just the yeah. army life. No, right? no, I'd I'd say, no. You don't even say that, Scott. Himself. Yeah, don't even no. say that, Scott. I'm, I'm talking uh, American MP, American MP, <laughs> single handedly <laughs> stopped ISIS. Yeah, he's got the, uh, he, he's got the longest recorded uh, stopping a drunk man on base in history. Longest. I mean, Good Morning <laughs> Vietnam was was See, an MP favorite. movie, right? Yeah, it was actually. Yeah, it was I actually. Like, it, was, it was. I know my it, shit, it was MP. Scott. It was MP, and then Robin Williams played as He's a the DJ. Uh, as a d- DJ, so he played for more of the uh, civil affairs right. people. He was um, like he was like Dakota over here. My Spin favorite the hits. My favorite movie has to be We Were Soldiers. Yep, I love that movie. By far the best movie I ever watched. Did you ever watch that movie? I haven't seen that one. Oh, good soundtrack too. In terms of like, if you, and then there's Band of Brothers. That that too, you need know, right. That's an HBO series, so that's not really a movie, but. Uh, in yeah, terms the, of like Band you can watch is... it, they'll use actual movements that the uh, the army uses in training. Band of Brothers, Band of Brothers, especially, yeah. and then a few parts in uh, We Were Soldiers, but that part gets pretty broken up because of what happened. So uh, Band of Brothers was World War Two, uh, right? Yes, and then uh, We Were Soldiers was Vietnam, yeah, early Vietnam War. It, yeah, it was very uh, early on because that was they weren't. Uh, pre- it was the army, but they oh, were. It was the army. Okay, they weren't prepared for the. Uh, and that was a that many uh, soldiers. It was a helicopter movie. So like basically the entire, uh, they all they come in, land on a battlefield, and they expect to take oh, on Black Hawk Down. Uh, no, that's uh, that's <laughs> that was in Africa. That was uh, Somalia. Is yeah, Black Somalia. Down, Somalia. Deer yeah. Hunter. 
So, but they, they land, and it's just wave after wave after wave of American it's helicopters like landing on, on the battlefield. And uh, I think they wind up winning the battle. But They, they just, do was, at the end. Um, that's why I haven't alert. watched the movie. Yeah, it's been out for a while. Yeah, it's been out for like 15 it. years. Uh, but they've got this, the, all of these tunnels, and the Americans didn't know to expect it at all. That was actually the first time they used helicopters. That's the first time the cavalry uh, used uh, helicopters. That's right. It was, the it, Vietnam. Was, it was, that the was the American a thing cavalry. Actually, in the beginning part of the movie, they actually talk about how they're using it the first time. But I think Greg Kinnear is he a helicopter pilot in that movie? I think so. Yeah, the interaction between the soldiers are pretty pretty accurate though. Like you'll have the uh, this I can't remember names, but there's a part where there there's a, especially in the early part of the movie, there's a sergeant who's walking down the way, and there's a command sergeant major who's also walking, and the soldier will be like, "Oh, good morning, sergeant major," and the sergeant major is like, "How do you know what kind of day it is?" <laughs> so that <laughs> Sergeant Major was Sam oh, Elliott, God. wasn't he? Isn't that remember. Sam Elliott, the uh, cowboy? Uh, the uh, do you ever watch? Uh, man, I got all the movies in my head, and I don't have the names. Chase, um, the Big Lebowski. I haven't watched that. Oh my God! You know the Big Lebowski, Chase? <clears throat> I think so. You've got the dude and all that, but then uh, you've got the, the guy. No, not the dude. This is the guy that's telling the story. Sam Sam Elliott. Okay. Uh, and he is, he's the, the guy at the bowling alley at the counter. I watched that movie for the first time like six months ago. Yeah, this is the guy that's telling the story. Anyway, Sam Elliott. We, we're we all going to Google Sam Elliott if you're looking at home, and we're going to be like, oh, yes, that's the guy. <laughs> Normally, uh, Sam Elliott has a mustache, and we were soldiers, mm-hmm. he didn't. That's Sam Elliott. Like, yep, that's It might be major. him. It's been a while since, I, it's been a few years since I watched the movie, but uh, <sighs> the interactions between the soldiers and Band of Brothers and We Were Soldiers are pretty, gotcha. pretty spot on. All right, enough of the movie reviews. Scott, whenever, whenever we were in high school, <clears throat> oh man, I hiccuped. <laughs> whenever we were in high school, uh, we were yeah. we were both not very political. At least we not didn't really. talk about it. Yeah, I wasn't um, really political. But as a, as a, we progressed, and you know, I didn't talk to you for what, four years about, but we remained friends on Facebook, and uh, I kept seeing you uh, during the 2016 election cycle. Kept posting like Gary Johnson memes, mm-hmm. libertarian yeah. memes, and I was like. Oh my gosh! Like, what are the chances? So, what is uh, like that? Tell me how you how you became a libertarian, and if the military influenced that at all. Well, yeah, I did. I uh, I was originally very very conservative. I was very religious. I uh, broke away from that. I went to I joined the army, and I started to realize. I started thinking, like, you know what? If something doesn't affect me, why do I care? And I, I started paying attention to the right, the GOP. And I was like, I don't like. Why does it matter that these people do that? That's not affecting anybody. And then on the uh, Democratic side, I'm like, that that law is not going to work because I shouldn't have to pay for this and that. And then I I don't want to pay for your failed attempt at governing. And then (laughs) especially during the 26th election, everyone was like, you guys got to choose between the lesser of two evils. I'm like, no, you don't. There's never choices. So I started researching the other choices. and That's when I discovered Gary Johnson. And then I had known about the Libertarian Party, but that's when I actually became a... That's when I converted to the dark side. So let, let me ask this question. <laughs> being, being, I assume, into, when did you uh, get discharged? Uh, actually, just in January. Okay. So at election time, you were an, at, you were in the, in the United States Army. Yes. And Gary Johnson was applying for the job of being your commander-in-chief. Yes. When he said, what is Aleppo? Did you go, no big deal? Or did you go, holy hell, this is terrible? No big deal. I didn't even know what it was. Yeah. Like, I don't <laughs> People ask, like, people are like, Let's be last people. I have a cousin in the army. He says he's doing all this training. We might be going to war. Like when I was in the army, I didn't even know what time I was getting off that day. So people in the army, <laughs> we don't have an inside not, story. We don't know what's really going worried on. About it. Yeah, we 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 worry about what we need to worry about. Like I pay attention to the Syria conflict, but I don't know each and every single thing. And the fact that Gary Johnson didn't know, you know, one. So the one uh, city, the National Guard here actually does convoys where mm-hmm. they where they go to uh where they go down to North Vernon in Indiana and they're they're always going they're always stopping at the Flying mm-hmm. J uh here in Henry County and I love seeing like the different posts from people that are like oh why are, why is all the military why are they driving their humvees on the on the interstate, yeah, it's freaked me <laughs> out a going? couple times. I, I'm always thinking, "Oh no, we got invaded! <laughs> so Run for the hills!" <laughs> it should be noted that the interstates were built for transporting our military first. Everything else is a side side. We're just there, yeah. yeah, yeah. But unless but, if you're late for work, and then, <laughs> gotta go. <laughs> then, and now they impede us. Like I, I, getting stuck behind the convoys, and that because those Humvees, like they're built 
to climb, right? Yeah. So they don't, they especially don't go that on an interstate. You know, the fastest you're doing about sixty or sixty four. Probably you go like if you start going anywhere above like forty, you're, it feels like the Challenger is about to explode. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's, I was the driver my entire time in the army, and like the 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 right speed is uh, even not the right speed. Like the right speed's like twenty five. You you put every time you go forty, you'd be going like, forty five. Oh you'd be my. going fifty, and whenever you'd be hitting fifty, you're like, I don't want to go any faster. It's like it's shaking like this. You driving a, a Humvee or a Jeep or what was? I the... drove a Humvee. Yeah, yeah, a big yeah, I... a big Humvee, not the not the H three. You were driving the big, made in Northern Indiana H ones. Yeah, yeah, are the ones that have the big antennas that they have to strap down while they're yeah. going down the interstate with what, like four was... individual seats. Yeah. What was the coolest thing you ever got to ride in? Uh, there's a, well, coolest is an interesting word. Uh, there's a thing called an ASV that the MP Corps uses a lot. It's the uh, armored security vehicle, ASV. Terrible vehicle. I hate it. Like, it's impossible to take care of. Um, As an MP, did you have, like, red and blue lights on your Humvee? We did not. We had our, we had our own patrol <laughs> We're going cars for lights that. on. We had our own patrol cars for I'm that. I'm always really concerned whenever I see those guys in the Humvees and they're like the guys that are sticking up out of the top. I'm like, <laughs> oh, somebody should put on their seatbelt. So did you? Did you? Do join... they have seatbelts in there? And like in the top, yeah, part? we have a that's, that's a harness that connects. Oh, so even yeah. more than a seatbelt. Would you yeah. write seatbelt tickets? Is it $25 over there, too, if you don't wear your seatbelt? <laughs> I never actually wrote many tickets as an MP. I like, as a libertarian, like, I'm like, I don't like traffic laws. So I would just, someone would be like, if someone was going fast, they'd pull them over, I'd be like, you're going really fast. They're like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, stop being stupid. And then I would, use, most of the time, unless it was, they were just going ridiculously fast in like a, a residential area, I would let it go. But I, I never really cared. I was like, you're stop being stupid. I just want to. Just called it a. No, so we uh. <laughs> so during the Gary Johnson campaign, we constantly saw um, all of these different memes, all of these different videos and things from from the campaign that was like eighty percent of active duty military that was polled would voted for Gary Johnson in a mock election. Mm-hmm. Like, is that were it's those numbers very, true? Or? It's very accurate. Uh, you know, in the military. You know, it's very because with Gary Johnson, he wants a more. If I, I might be mistaken, he wants a more nationalistic approach. He wants to pull troops out. He, the army, at least the army, we're pretty done with the whole Middle East conflict. That's we've lost way too many people over pretty, there. Pretty and done with being anywhere but that's not the yeah. USA. So the fact Gary Johnson, you know, he didn't really. He he, I'm, I'm trying to figure out. In my personal opinion, from me, I can't speak for the entire army. Just with his approaches, we probably would have made more money and without having to actually affect the DOD budget very much because right. we'd be pulling people out of places we don't need to be in. And uh, But for everybody else, everybody is pretty uh, libertarian, at least in the uh, MP Corps and infantry and like, is combat. It, is like as far as foreign policy is concerned. At least, right? Yeah, at least with foreign policy. You know, the army, the military in general is very, very, very diverse, so you're going to have very, like, uh, right wing individuals, you know, very left wing individuals, but everyone's pretty much in the middle. So you have right. some people who might be more centrist versus libertarian, but everyone has at least some libertarian and I, mindsets I, for the most part. It's actually kind of interesting whenever you think about it because a, a lot of times people that travel around, mm-hmm. like mi- in, civilians that travel around, uh, it end up being, end up thinking more, uh, I guess it would be uh, like, what are we doing to help our nation, right? Yeah. So uh, that's pretty pretty much it's really interesting pretty, because, yeah. like, everybody in the military is obviously traveling around. A lot, uh, yeah. So there's a, there's a direct correlation there between between those two groups of people. See, I went from – that's a, it's a good point. I uh, I went from being in high school. I was very, very to myself. And then in the Army, I went to – I went to Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri for training. And then I went to South Korea, and then I went to Fort Bliss, El pa- which was in uh, El Paso, Texas, which is a border town. So I've met all kinds of people, all kinds of backgrounds. So it's kind of made me think, like, okay, at yeah. the end of the day, and especially with other people, most people are like, okay, at the end of the day – is what I'm doing affecting somebody else? No. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How how often do they play Marty Robbins music in El Paso? <laughs> El Paso. I can go on for a while. I'm not fond of El Paso. <laughs> I didn't really go out very much. People can't drive over there. <laughs> and apparently Ohio? they don't have good beer. Yeah. They don't either. They they 
they they uh they like their Bud Lights, and there's nothing wrong with Bud yeah. Light, but yeah, Dilly Dilly. Hash, hashtag death before domestic. Yeah, that's my new. And poor is the way to go. I, like I'll do like microbreweries, but I I'm not a huge fan of light beers. Oh yeah, me either. I hate them. So just if I have to drink like a regular domestic beer, it's probably going to be like a Miller High Life. Me too. Really? I'd yeah. never drink a Bud Light lime, <laughs> just for the record. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> We, I we really, yeah, make I stay away of, from domestic beer. I can't really think of any I actually go to. Every time I'm like, do they have imported? And then it's yeah. I, I there's not there's not any that I particularly care for. And we have just as we learned on a previous episode of the Boss Hog of Liberty, we have Jimmy Carter, President Jimmy Carter, to thank for the craft beer boom and in the his industry. brother Billy for Billy Beer for Billy Beer. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that. Check your history books. I'm, I'm kids. glad you brought that up. <laughs> So you're you're starting at Ball State. I am, yes. Chirp, are, chirp. What are you? We what are you going to be studying? Ball State professor and other Ball State students. Oh, really? no, that, cool. the, that was the that was the segue into that, yeah. Jeremiah. But uh, <laughs> thank you for skipping over that. You're welcome. <laughs> what are you What are you studing, Scott? I'm going to be doing uh, telecommunications. Telecommunications. Want to go into? Uh, Do they make you go on campus for that, or can you phone it in? I'm I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm doing that it was on pretty campus. good. That was good. I'll give you that. I, I was, wish uh, I had a soundboard that would go. I want to do it like videography or uh, filmmaking. Oh, sweet! And travel with that, so he can make all of our advertisements, Jer. Advertisements, yes, yes. So okay. yeah, do, do you, you want to be our grip? I've heard we need a grip on this show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't want to be licensed as that, but you know, I have a camera and a pretty good mic, so I can. <laughs> you know, if you want to do some running shots like that, there we go. I can do that. Uh, Except not physically running. I don't, yeah. I don't not, do that. <laughs> I'm still not much of a runner yet. I'm down, <laughs> the latest report is I'm down about 49 pounds, but we're still not in running shape yet. 49 pounds. Down Chase 49. Chase actually run. What? <laughs> Chase, you want to go for a run? I can't, dude. I got we'll a do bad the, heart. We'll, we'll do the stupid <laughs> Olympics. My, my morbid obesity versus your bad ticker. Let's see who makes it. Telecommunications. That's uh, where you move spoons with your mind, right? Yes. Yeah. You okay. bend them. I think you're supposed to bend them. Yes. Yeah. It's like the men who stare at goats. And the, that the, the whole that is my kingdom. favorite military movie of all time. What was that? The, the men, men who stare at goats. goats. I haven't watched that. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Yeah, we'll have to do that sometime. Oh, I mean, yeah. how long are the flights over there? Like 14 hours, 18 <laughs> hours? <laughs> Korea? Yeah. Uh, it was an 11-hour flight. And, and you didn't I watched... have time to watch The Men Who Stare it was, at Goats. It was all like <laughs> crappy movies. <laughs> who's who's the actor that everybody craps on with crappy movies? The guy... Dax Shepard. The guy in Happy Gilmore. The main the main guy. Adam, Adam Sandler. Sandler. Adam Sandler. There's like five Adam Sandler movies. The one where mm-hmm. he went to Africa, I watched like because... three times. That makes oh, sense because every it Adam Sandler movie is great. Yeah. I love Adam Sandler. He, he's, Except he's, for the he's, one where he played his sister. That one sucked. That was weird. Yeah. That was just awkward that's the kinda like, time. That's kind of like whenever Jack Black was in the movie Bernie. That was really weird. Whenever he's a mortician that kills that old lady and stuffs her in her freezer. I that. have gone back and forth on sure. buying a Jack Black movie for like a month. Which and I one? need to finally do it. Like Saving, any? Saving Silverman. Just... I love that I one. have gone... I want a copy. I haven't seen it in so long, and I'm literally waffling about, like... You can't stream it on... I can, but I don't like to spend the money to stream a movie. It's not on any platform, so it's like uh, 12 bucks to buy on YouTube, and I'm like... Yeah, you might as well just buy it. I then. really... I've been craving to watch that movie. Have I, you ever, I feel have like you ever seen it. Bernie? No. All right, you gotta watch Bernie I'm sometime. not... I'm really not much of a Jack Black fan. Oh, Tropic I Thunder. Love Jack School Black. of Rock was well, yeah, classic. Yeah. Tra- are we happy with Tropic Thunder? It was a comedy, but it was I funny, I love yeah. Tropic Thunder. I love that movie. Uh, it's so a good one. One more army question. Okay. Did any major politicians or celebrities ever stop in to visit you? USO tours, Bob Hope kind of things. Unfortunately, no. Vice president never showed up. Your congressman, none of that stuff. You never like Jim Banks. He's a congressman yeah, who serves. He never, he never showed. I never. If they did, I never really went. They never. You weren't in yeah. the cool spots. Yeah, I was. I was probably working most of the time. To yeah. be honest, I know uh, Donald Trump. Actually, President Trump came to uh, South Korea, Camp Humphreys. Yes, as we're recording this, President Trump is definitely still the president. Yes, yes for, for sure. Now. And he uh, he actually came there in I think 2016 or 2017. Excuse me. I remember 2017. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, what like a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he was there. There's so, was so like, much ambiguity in this episode now. I'm back really in, enjoying this. Back in my day. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so that I was cool. I think that was the closest one. We only like, oh. owed back in 2017. We only owed 19 trillion dollars as a company, wow. as a country. Yeah, we're over 20 now. Oh, that's 
mostly defense or spending. almost able to legally drink yeah. as an entire nation. <laughs> yep. If, I, if our, for our bar tab, our bar tab is almost able to drink now. <laughs> Twenty-one yeah. trillion gazillion dollars. Anyway, please continue. Trump. Oh yeah, he just, he did, I just saw a friend post and I was like, yeah. oh, that's that's neat. I probably wouldn't have gone to that, but that's cool. Yeah. Mm. Do you guys have to go through security as as military guys? Do you have to go through security? It's to see I remember when I was flying. I flew. You're supposed to fly out of Osan Air Force Base whenever you're you're leaving Korea. They didn't have enough tickets, so I left out of Incheon, which is the best airport I've ever been in. Been in Incheon. Incheon, hmm. which is very close to Seoul. Who's Sean? <laughs> Hilarious, <laughs> very funny. And uh, the uh, I remember it was an eleven hour flight. We landed. They, it was very streamlined for military because you have your DOD card, so you kind of get ushered through. And I remember I was in San Francisco, and I got off an eleven hour flight. Terrible. Oh, yeah. But being the Easterner that I am, I immediately think <clears throat> you've got to fly east every time. I'm like, oh yeah, every yeah. flight goes to Europe and beyond. No. You fly the other way. Yeah, it's over the Pacific. Yeah. So I remember I. Land in San Francisco, and I was in a terrible mood. I was tired. I was hungry. You land, and everybody is fabulous. And the the thing that made me the San piss Francisco me off the most was everybody was wearing San Francisco shirts and sweaters. I'm like, I get it. Like, I know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I was hey. like, all right, I'm gonna go to an airport food. I'm like, I just want some food. And on the flight, on the flight to to San Francisco, they gave you some food, and I had to, I actually had to hold my nose to eat it because it was so bad. Oh. God. So, I landed. I got. I got to the food court. I'm like, there has to be something that's like semi edible. I ordered my food. It's the same dish. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so. Wait a minute. You just told us that the cuisine in in South Korea was it was, was airport quite good. food. I can't speak for air, airlines. Uh, yeah, uh, you couldn't find a Nathan's hot dog stand. Unfortunately, I don't. I don't remember. I, I was. I was angry in San Francisco. I just. I, I hated everybody. Everybody was smiling, wearing those shirts. It's like I. I know where I am. You're, we know where you are. Take. Take that. I mean. I mean. When I see everyone was wearing, I mean, everyone was wearing. I felt like I was in a cult. And I just. I missed. I missed the memo. Where do I? What line for the Kool Aid? That, that oh, was man. good. Speaking of that, a couple weeks ago, our uh, dear leader, Chris Spengel, went to Washington, D.C. He did, And yeah. you need to go back and listen to those episodes uh, from when he was reco- re- uh, recording or covering the Washington, D.C. trip. He had the planes, trains, and automobiles trip. Oh, yeah. I watched all of his live streams. They were yeah. quite entertaining. Epic. So, yeah, a little plug for uh, for our syndicator, Chris Spengel. Go back and uh, listen to uh, listen to those episodes of We're Libertarians. Incredible. Chase on the sports desk. Breaking news. USF. Just beat Purdue. No. Yeah, sorry, Jeremy. Oh, my God. Purdue 92 lost. to 69 on a buzzer beater. Purdue it's lost a lot of buzzer beaters. the Big Ten <laughs> yeah. Championship. Yeah, it's getting crazy. <laughs> Purdue lost the Big Ten Championship, and now they lost. Who'd they lose to? Central Florida? No, USF. US, University South Florida. of South Florida. Oh, or man. Southern Florida. It's like the worst part. Yeah. They had a great football team, though. Is that the one that went undefeated this year? They did. They, yeah. they went... What was it like? Six zero oh, and sixteen. Yeah, a couple of years ago. Uh, la- the year before last, and then they went undefeated last year. Yep, it's gonna happen to the Browns. Dakota, this is a uh, football, sports, and whatnot. Well, I appreciate it. I want to uh, commend Dakota and his uh, bells too hard. Did you go to the factory and pick that up? No, I didn't. You, this is a this was a free gift. Really? Yeah. Uh, is this from our sponsor that benefits only? No, you? it's not a sponsorship. <laughs> I just spent enough money on their website to get it. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, this is Indiana, so you're not allowed to buy liquor on their website. What in the world are you buying on BillsTooHearted.net? Uh, I bought a I bought a couple other shirts. <laughs> <laughs> he's just <laughs> he's just wearing their stuff now. He doesn't he, he likes the clothes more well, than the, I bought, more than the beer. I bought a sweatshirt which I really like, and then I bought that sticker pack. All right, which, uh, Chase, you gotta you gotta scoot back so that the people can see it. Once again, this is a podcast, but if you're looking on the there YouTube, it is. There there's, it is. Uh, there's the sticker pack. Yep. See, that's a little plug for our YouTube channel. There you go. Oh, man. All right. I so, think it's time to get into some serious stuff. So a couple weeks ago. Some serious business. We've yes. spent an hour goofing around, and you that's tried, time to get... You tried to get suicided by creating the biggest controversy in the history of this county. Yes. Uh, that's absolutely correct. Bomb, bomb, bomb. The, uh, on episode 46, two episodes ago, mm-hmm. you teased... That there would be a major story breaking in the Courier Times. I did. And that County Councilman Clay Morgan, co-host, would, had asked some questions at the 
recent county council meeting. And he said, where did all this money go? Because basically the county sheriff's department had been authorized for every, I don't know, I don't know, MPs, you probably get all your uniforms for free. Mm, MP, the, we have to, well, we get our, 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 our uh, vest for free, the belts and all that stuff. But for the army, you have to buy your own uniforms. You get a clothing allowance. So you do get a clothing allowance. Yeah, uh, see, our guys, every year, though. How our much is your clothing allowance? Do you remember? I forget the exact formula. So I honestly can't it's remember it. Well, it, very is it like, depends on your your like rank and your time of service. Okay, so your BMI, like fat guys, like I. This is this is the story of my life. Two X, three X, and four X shirts. They cost more. So I'm wondering if, like, if you're a bigger guy, if they get you a bigger clothing allowance, because you know, no. it's usually like three bucks more the, for a uh, shirt. The army just you you, uh, you buy uniforms for, and this covers all uniforms. So it's not just your your uh, your uh, OCPs, your ACUs, your PTs. It also goes for your awards, your ASUs, the berets. The army changes its uniform like every five years, so you got to keep up with that too. Your boots, right? So it it doesn't cover everything, but it helps relieve the financial burden i guess so our sheriff's department uh for our deputies all everybody was treated the same mm-hmm. socialist uh darren jacobs must have some involvement in it it must be the uh we barely got him worked into episode 47 i'm glad we got him in episode 48 i am too anyway uh they were at 600 bucks a year mm-hmm. was the was your uh, your uniform allotment mm-hmm. Uh, the county council in 2017, I remember 2017, it was way back then, 2017, they voted to increase the 2018 allotment to $1,000 a person. Mm-hmm. Dakota, what happened? So like you said, uh, in, in 2017, for the 2017 budget, um, they they voted to increase the clothing allowance to from $600 to $1,000 per deputy. And they also voted to increase the the vehicle budget by... Fifteen thousand um, dollars, and if if you guys have been following anything that had to do with the budget, um, I think Councilman Clay Morgan actually put out some videos last year during the process where he uh, talked about and kind of slammed about all of the all of the different rises. After they passed the budget, the the auditor came back and they came back with the suggestion that we had to cut seven hundred thousand dollars from the Henry County budget, the the general fund budget. Because um, the State Board of Accounts said they had to cut that. Well, actually, this comes from an estimate first. Okay. The auditor makes an estimate before it is sent off to uh, to the State Board of Accounts. And uh, they have a, they have a little bit of communication there, but it's, it is it is all an estimate at first. But it's a very well-educated guess. And uh, so they said, hey, guys, we've got to cut $700,000. They had a separate meeting on October 2nd. I looked at the the minutes from the October second meeting. There was like two paragraphs where it said that they just declined to giving everybody in the county a thousand dollar raise, and that was about it. And that does not count for seven hundred thousand dollars of cuts. Uh, that doesn't make any sense at all. Um, but that that's not part of this process. But uh, uh, Clay ended up hearing from some of the sheriff's deputies that they didn't have the the 400 extra dollars in their clothing allowance and they didn't have the $15,000 that they were promised for their vehicles which was quite concerning because the only people that can actually alter the budget in the county government is the county council that is why the county council is there is to kind of be the checks and balances of the entire system the county so, the county council is the financial arm and the right. county commissioners are the executive branch basically of county government yeah exactly and then all the other people are administrators yes so the council forms the budget then the auditor either approves it or they send it back and then uh, this year the auditor cut the $700,000 and then on after the October 2nd meeting it was submitted to the state and the council has to approve moving any kind of money. It cannot be sent to the state without the council voting on it. So whenever we say that there was money that is missing, it's a lot bigger deal than what you think it is because that means that something happened where people didn't follow the proper channels that are there to keep our government in check, to keep people from doing things like laundering money. So you took a day off work. I did. I had, yeah. You took a day off Friday work. off work. I put my investigative journalist hat on press press dog dakota <laughs> correct and i uh, you brought your tablet well the yeah my my tablet you're, yeah your your notepad yeah. um, your secret diary so uh, i i titled this in my in my secret diary it is called lost money 
because okay. that's that's what we're dealing with here. We have no idea where the money went. So the first thing I did was I started making phone calls. I called the auditor's office. Well, it turns out that the auditor's on vacation this week. Her assistant was on vacation. The, the auditor assistant. was there. That's very convenient. Her person hmm. that does a lot of the legwork and the the the, the auditors are it's no, a, it's they're a, both on vacation. Both a, one of them, yeah. The the actual auditor what didn't leave for vacation until Friday. The auditor's assistant was she on vacation found out before Dakota that. Was on the case, and she went yeah. on vacation. So the auditor was actually at the at the county council meeting and uh, could have answered any of the questions that Councilman Morgan actually brought up, but didn't. Nobody had the answers. Not even any of the council members had any answers as to what happened. Um, but anyway, back to back to the mainline story. I called the auditor's office. Nobody is there to talk to me. I can't figure out why. They basically told me, you know, we can't tell you anything. Please leave us alone. I made a couple other Stop phone calls. Stop bothering me. Yeah. I made a couple other phone calls with people, which I, I should have just called as a concerned citizen. Right. Instead, I said, I'm Dakota Davis with Boss Hogle Liberty Podcast. Uh-oh. And uh, so I'm calling as media, and you brought this point up. I'm calling as media, which makes people nervous. So I was like, okay, I'm not getting anywhere with this. And... Uh, all I know now is what Travis knows. And then it hit me. I go to the man with the source, the source of the story. So I drove to the MVP barbershop to visit our friend Clay Morgan. There are three people waiting in the chairs to get their haircuts, but this couldn't wait. This is a countywide emergency. So you interviewed Clay. I did. Did you have your handy dandy notebook? I did. And I wrote down everything that he said okay. in the notebook. So. This is a... He said, Dakota, wait in line. It will be $8. Yeah. Well, I ended up waiting there for about... <laughs> I, I, I waited for about 30 minutes, and then it finally cleared up. I didn't really want to cut in line for people. That would be rude. So uh, he finally cleared out, and I finally got the chance to talk to him. So he said that if the council did not approve the cutting of the money, and the sheriff has to ask for the money, the sheriff would have to ask for additional appropriations, which was Mr. Uh, Commissioner Kim Cronk's... It, Original so original recommendation. If was, you're spending your regular money that's in your budget, you just spend it and you don't have to go asking. But if right. you're asking for extra money, you have to go ask the council to move money around for you. Exactly. So it, that's, that's the way this typically works. Yeah, that's that's what uh, that's what Kim Cronk was saying in the Wednesday meeting was that, well, the sheriff just needs to ask for additional appropriations. Clay said, um, I recall the that the that the council actually made these made these leaps in the budget. During the session, they shouldn't have to ask for additional appropriations. Like that's that's not how this process works. Um, and he said that if he asked to, if he asked to ask the sheriff himself, if he ha- has to ask for that money, then it is proof that someone has meddled with the money. So you tried to do you speak with, or you did speak with Sheriff Rick McCorkle as well? No, uh, not really. Or no. you reached out to his office. Yeah, it was. Uh, there's no. I mean, I, Rick McCork was a good dude, but uh, he, he... We did he, it. We judged a chili oh, yeah. contest with him. He's a friend he of the doesn't, show. He doesn't want to get involved in these types of things. He's really just more worried about getting the things for his deputies, which is a position that you can respect. He wants to work with anybody who will who will move this process along. But uh, the uh, uh, there's a whole separate issue of insurance in here and $97,000 that wasn't in there. And it 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 just get, it started spiraling spiraling out of control. The more that I it started gets learning about this, very complicated very quickly, doesn't it? Oh my gosh! You get uh, on oh my gosh! Home. I so I called uh, um uh, one person who I'm not going to name. Oh, an unnamed um, source. <laughs> yeah, this is an unnamed source, and this is more of a conspiracy theory source that was kind of trying to draw lines between the missing money and the ninety seven thousand dollars that had to be that had to come up to be funded. But I'm not going to endorse that idea at all because I, I don't think that's really right. Um, because at the end of the day, I ended up uh, getting a return phone call from uh, Mr. Kim Cronk, the commissioner. And Mr. Kim Cronk's side of the story, which I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you both sides here and you can make up the decision for yourself. Um, we, we are libertarians, boss, hog liberty, fair and balanced. We yes. report, you decide. Exactly. <laughs> So, Mr. So we we already know one side of the story. This the uh, the side of the story that uh, that we have heard at the beginning is that there was a, a horrible clerical error, and that 
um, people, somebody uh, either didn't submit or intentionally moved the money out of what the, the sheriff's clothing allowance and their vehicle allowance. That is one side of the story. The other side of the story is that what actually happened on the October 2nd, 2017 meeting is that that is when the county councilors were supposed to vote on the LOA budget. So this is when I learned that there are actually two budgets that the county councilors have to come up with. You've got a general fund budget and a LOA budget. Correct. LOA is the local option income tax, which is used for public safety. Right. Quarter of 1% added tax that I spoke against at the public meeting, by the way, but uh, Clay and all of the other county commissioners, councilmen. That's true. And, Stavis. Uh, yep. They all voted for it. They raised your taxes, everybody. Yep. Just but they, uh, So that's when I learned... I didn't know that before that they had to create separate budgets. This is my mm. microphone. Oh, okay. I'm doing a separate interview. And uh, I didn't know they had to create separate budgets, but after I talked to Kim Cronk, I, I did know that. And uh, he said that on the October 2nd meeting, what the council voted to do was take out all of that money and put it into the LOA budget. So instead of it being in the general fund, the council votes to put it into the LOA budget so that they can come up with the $700,000 that they had to cut. So they shifted money out of the general fund, and and they moved it into public safety money. And they money. moved it into the public safety money, money because it was dealing with the sheriff's department. So I've been told that you can request as a, uh, you know, all, all the information down there is public information. Correct. The, the low-up budget's been around. The low-up spending's been around for like two years. You could, as uh, citizen Dakota Davis of Henry well, County, request uh, all of the transactions at the lowest budget and try to figure out where it's actually going. What I was told is that there is $35,000 sitting in the lowest budget that is directly uh, supposed to replace all the money for the uniforms and for the and for the vehicle. And that source is Mr. Kim Cronk. Uh, like I said, you can make up your mind, decide what you want to. But those are, those are the two sides of the story. And uh, those are, I mean, very conflicting sides of each story. But he he told me that the minutes would be in the in the October second, two thousand seventeen meeting. I looked up the minutes, and they weren't in there. So that's all. Did I got. you look on both sides of the paper, front and back? Oh, uh, it was a digital copy. Oh. And I did it from home on my laptop because this is the twenty first century. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they only scanned one side, and the part you needed was on the other side. Ah, uh, that's probably it. I didn't even think of that. I mean, there's two budgets, so there are two sets of minutes. But I mean, seriously, like this doesn't even really have to do with where the money went, but two paragraphs for cutting $700,000, like, why isn't it all in there? That doesn't make any sense. I have no idea. That That is so, the, probably the most irritating thing that came out of all of it. So you put your reporter hat on. What was it, yep. uh, what was it like trying to go to the county courthouse and get answers? Uh, it was interesting. Uh, you go there and you see everybody walking around and then you get really nervous. I got really nervous, so I walked in, and I I said hi. I pretty much said hi and bye after I was told that uh, nobody was in that I could talk to in the in the auditor's office, and uh, that was about it. I was very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I was, it was it was nerve wracking. I'm like, oh man, what if they require like a permit for journalists? <laughs> like like Jim Lucas was saying, just, what if that's a uh, Henry County law now? Just whip out our little mag- uh, magnet. Well, see, I have business cards yeah, you now. Get business oh, cards. Yeah, that's true. I'm much those more don't professional. Have your, those don't have your face on them like the, <sighs> like the I just dropped do. 50 of them off at, at the barbershop, too. Really? So anybody can try to get a hold of me. My phone number's on there. They're all just Dakotas. They're not the Jeremiah <laughs> Moral ones? No. Interesting. Because I only carry mine in my wallet. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a very good team player. No. Nope. Mm-mm. Apparently not. All right. Well, thank you for doing that, Dakota. It's it was really uh, interesting. The exciting part of uh, of of this yeah. show. Two weeks ago, endless yeah. opportunities and what you can do. Yeah. So uh, we've got some local elections coming up, Mr. Chairman. This weekend, Saturday. No, this weekend, Sunday, March eighteenth, area LP convention. Final chance for people to buy tickets. Get your yes. tickets. We just you a couple have to left to tickets. You must prepay. It's the it is, final countdown. Mark Rutherford will be there. You mm-hmm. heard him on the show. He will be there. He'll uh, be really good. I hear that uh, there's going to be some major announcements for some people running for local office. Plausibly that's, Jeremiah Morrill, County Council District 1. That's what I heard, too. There's no uh, no official announcement, but if you pay the $22 for the ticket, you might find out. You might find You might see some breaking news. Just saying. 
All right. Am I going to have to put on my journal and sat for that one too? No, the uh, the Courier Times says they're coming. Oh, so you can read about it in the county nice. county paper of uh, of record. So uh, nobody's filed yet. We don't have any libertarians that have filed on the ballot. Nope. Uh, because that happens at that convention. Correct. And then more people can go on between uh, between that date, between the March 18th date and June 30th. So if somebody's listening and is very inspired about libertarianism and wants to get on the ballot and isn't happy with their choices on the Republican side and the Democrat side, all they have to do is call Dakota when he's not wearing his reporter hat and he can be wearing his My county chairman, chairman hat. Yep. And uh, we can vet you and have some conversations about maybe running for office. Yep. It's too bad Scott doesn't live in Henry County. He can just... Like, like right there. there. <laughs> so close. A Muncie. Well, there's a strong Delaware County group g- growing as well. We're going to have to plug them in and let get them to meet some of those people. Uh-huh. So uh, no libertarians have filed yet. But uh, I think you're going to see three, four, five, maybe more local candidates, people on your ballot from, from Henry County or on the Henry I County so. ballots. I think this is going to be a strong year for libertarians. So there's some opportunities. Uh, we've kind of covered it a little bit in the past. There are a number of races that we're covering on this show. With our reporter hats, uh, and we've got some kind of a series between next week's show uh, on the twenty second of March. We're going to be interviewing Susan Hewn, running for county council. You heard from uh, Nate Lamar already. He's the uh, the incumbent in county council district. I think that's district either district three or district uh, four. I think it's district, district four. Thir- I thought it was three. Mm, one of those. Yeah, it's the uh, the dis- the eastern half of Henry County. So Nate Nate has it now, and the primary challenger is Susan Hoon. Uh, so Susan's going to come on on March 22nd, the following week, former sheriff, current county commissioner, Butch Baker will be on. So Butch is the, uh, the guy running. He lives in the northern part of the county, and the entire county runs uh, votes, but you have to live in a certain district. So it's basically in thirds. So Butch I, lives in the northern part. There's a guy named Ed Tarantino who's running, uh, running that race. We're going to try to have Ed on as well. I actually saw Butch. At uh, at the courthouse whenever I was there, I don't think he. Did you try to shake me. him down for answers? No, 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 no. He was. Uh, I I I heard about what Butch had to say um, from another source, and I already knew what he was going to tell me. Gotcha. So uh, yeah, we're gonna have Butch on. That's gonna be fun. And I think but- Butch was a uh, was a beat cop. He started out as a city <laughs> cop for Newcastle. Yeah. So we're gonna get some stories out of Butch too. We're oh yeah, have some nice. Fun. It'll be good. See, see what comes out of that. I hope and he's then got he was stories sure. like oh. Mike Kreider. That was a good episode of right. good I'm cop stories. I think we should have him taser one of you guys. Ooh, you know Taser's what? not too bad. We will have uh, <laughs> we'll have Chase tased uh, for the show. I, mean, I got a bad heart. That could really. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's really true. Yeah. Scott that's... will come back and get tased. Yeah, he's oh, yeah, he's yeah, done it before. Scott's been through it once before. You know, I, I get tased again. I want to get out of seat again. Uh, wait, wait. The guy collects a military disability check. Are you really saying you want to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, I, for those of you who don't know, I, uh, I have a brain injury. I got a traumatic brain injury uh, last year because I fell. And uh, <laughs> bar, Bad bar fight you're breaking up? We're going to go with that. <laughs> we're not going to tell the true story right now, but uh, yeah, I, I fell. So. It was scary. I was watching it from the sidelines on Facebook. I was pretty, I was pretty close. I uh, had a blood clot on my uh, the right side of my brain that right there we were so, there was a, a lot of people really concerned that you weren't going to pull yeah, I, I almost didn't but i did um world didn't get rid of me that easily so <laughs> and your well, hair's all grown back covers up any scars it is. you have that's you know? right it's right here but you can't see it because i have a beanie and uh <laughs> you're not like cousin eddie with the oh, <laughs> got a piece of government plastic right there and uh, this gets messed up my hair's just not gonna look yeah right. I, uh, I posted a picture i don't know if you saw it dakota i posted a picture a couple like i think last Whenever the 26th was. Of the scar. Oh, the scar. Yeah, yeah so I that, was, that was nasty. Yeah, that was pretty Those were good days. Ooh. Yeah, so uh, we're not going to tase Scott. Okay. Yeah. We just decided that. We're, not gonna, we're also not going to OC me. <laughs> not doing that again. Like, I'm going to start at home. I can, I can pull it out. I think it's up to the two of us, Jer. No, we've got a lot of co-hosts. Rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, that's true. Cade and Danny. Cade and Danny. We're going <laughs> to... Hey, we're going to put them in the octagon. We're, we're outsourcing our work. Here. <laughs> getting it done. And then uh, April 5th, we're going to have uh, Betsy Mills on. <laughs> Betsy's a newcomer to the county, uh, to the county political world. She's a Ball State graduate. Mm-hmm. And uh, I met her at that uh, that most recent county commissioner's meeting that I attended. Okay. Uh, so exciting to have her. She's uh, she's friends with Chloe Anagnos. Went to Ball State with her in that circle. So we All had right. Kat on the show. Yeah. Chloe's been a longtime contributor of We Are Libertarians. So uh, excited to hear from uh, from Betsy as well. Get to know her a little bit. 
Awesome. So we got all kinds, of, and then beyond that, we're still we're still planning. But uh, uh, as as people are watching this, listening to this, send us a DM: uh, Jeremiah at BossHogLiberty dot com, Dakota at BossHogLiberty dot com, Chase at BossHogLiberty dot com. Send us an email. Tell us what you want to hear. The the issues you want us to talk about. It's a crowdsourced show, so hit us up. Yep, let us know true. what issues you want to talk about, and uh, we're going to get into wind. Don't worry about that. We're going to talk about wind with all of them, but there are a whole <laughs> lot more issues than just wind and doughboys and and the like. There's there's a lot to I'm, talk uh, about. Chase, do you want to move the doughboy? Okay, I was going to get into this in my final thoughts, like I usually do. Well, all I'm asking are we for... moved on to that point yet? Uh, I want to give you some time. No, I think we're fine. Okay, we can we can do final thoughts. We'll start with Chase's final thoughts. I want to okay. I want to hear about the doughboy. Okay, I was gonna I was gonna I have a few things. Okay. First off, I want to say all I'm asking for is a free T-shirt and a wristband that says "Save the Doughboy." I will wrap it for you guys. It's wait, it's, it's not like Save the Clock Tower, right? I mean, the, like in it, there's a movie made back in the mm-hmm. '80s. <laughs> yeah, he's old. Yeah, we, just had to, we just had to clarify that. There, there's a movie made back, back in, in the, the day, 80s. 2017. Back, back, way back in the 80s. Uh, Michael J. Fox, uh, Back to the Future. Perhaps you've heard of it. Oh yes, it was Save Save the Clock Tower. The clock was broken. 1955. All this stuff. So that was the you know, Save the Doughboy, Save the Clock Tower. It's the same deal. Uh, but they were going to tear down the clock tower, and they saved it. <laughs> Anyway, so all I'm saying is, it's when not I, quite the, 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 the doughboy is still going to exist. When it's I become where. park president, do you want a person who's going to want to put the doughboy back in the original spot, or do you want a person who's going to move it? Because I've had people tell me they will buy me a shirt that says "Move the Doughboy." So it's up to you guys. Which one do you want me to support? Which it, you, basically, whichever shirt you get first is uh, is the position you're going to hold. Yes. See, Chase, you were you were going to be such a good political candidate because you <laughs> completely <laughs> danced around an answer, but you gave something that was like, oh, okay, like it was like, oh, all right, I'll accept that answer, and then you think about it later and you go, I don't know what Chase said. He was like that answered nothing. <laughs> Next, I want to say congrats. To uh, Newcastle for winning uh, sectionals. Yes. and uh, They did win the sectional. Breaking wanna... news, they also won state. <gasps> Already? Already. I thought the state was in a week or two. Of course, um, they had the big <laughs> win there in regionals. Yeah, regionals. Yeah, oh, uh, you know, I saw them in the future. <laughs> they won state. You know, 73 to 69. Ooh, on, on a buzzer, buzzer beater. beater. Buzzer beater on with a foul beater. there. Yes. I am, yeah. I am... Mason Gillis with the with a three-point play plus the free throw. To yep. give them the four point win, killed it. Killed it. I'm glad you brought up the truth because that is that is my final thoughts. Oh my bad. Yeah, it was <laughs> a, a good transition. Well, well, no, it was a good, really, really good segue. I appreciate it. You're welcome. So we are so out of sorts. Our our actual guest over here hasn't done his final thoughts. We're moving yet, on. What is my final? Scott thoughts? is going to take over the very last final thoughts. I don't think so. He's gonna yeah. He's gonna close the episode. One more thing. One more thing. Yeah. I've also been brainstorming over here, okay? Oh, good. Oh, gosh. And about the Boss Hog Liberty movie, what if we just take uh, little segments from Archer and just replace oh, the names? Yes. That would be great. I love that show. Boom. All I'll right. Take that show off Netflix. They are? Yeah, it's up until the March 14th. Oh, no. It hurt my heart. Oh, works. wait. Yeah, because they're a Fox. They're a Fox program. Yeah, so up until so, the uh, tomorrow, actually, it's taken yeah. down. Here's some other news on the Boss Hog of Liberty. Fo- or Netflix forgot to renew its contract with Fox, so every single program and every single TV show yeah. that you ever liked that was on Fox... Which is most wanna, of them. Yeah. Not Arrested Development. You Please, wanna, God, tell me Arrested Development didn't go away. Arrested Development is made by Netflix now. Right. So but it, it was a Fox show originally. Don't it's don't, safe. They bought the rights. Please to tell it. me it didn't go away because I would no. I American would burn the city to the ground. American Dad, oh. Family Guy, Archer. I mean, all the greats. These are the real issues. Yeah, they are. They're, it's horrifying. <laughs> Debauchery is what it is. That's all you got. Well, that that was that was only on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> but I but I I do want to say in my final thoughts that I really appreciate. Everybody that watches this show to make me motivated enough to actually drive around town on a Friday, uh, make a bunch of phone calls and t- trying to pursue things that I read in the local newspaper. It's really cool. Um, I heard a quote by Owen Benjamin the other day where he said that if you if you pursue the truth enough, 
then eventually you will see the future. That's awesome. That was a really cool quote. And I, I kept thinking about that all day on Friday whenever I was like, every time that I would hit a brick wall and I, I couldn't hear any types of facts and everything was just assumptions. I kept thinking about that and it, it was really neat. It was an, it was a cool experience again. Another cool experience that was, that was brought to me by this show. And I, I appreciate everybody for watching to make me motivated enough to do that. And remember, as George Costanza says, it's not a lie if you believe it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, is that it? That's you got Yep, it? that's my final thoughts. How Are we going to do you? How yours? do people follow you, Dakota? Uh, everybody, I think, that wants to follow me is following me now. At this point, we just know who yep. you are. Chase, you're, uh, you, of course, you've created the Ball Sucker Liberty Twitter page. Yes. Follow me there. Follow you there. And then, <laughs> and then Chase Payton on, uh, on the Twitter. Yeah. On the Twitter box. Yeah, don't follow me. I never post anything. <laughs> <laughs> you only post on the Ball Song page, right? I like a bunch of stuff on Twitter. So you yeah. see that. But... Yeah, sometimes you like art. Basically, when I post something on behalf of the show, you like it, and you're like one of my likes I get each time. That's about it. I just stalk people. All right. So it's because it, you haven't, well, you're not going to have to do that anymore, Jerry, because now Chase has created the Ball Song of Liberty account. Exactly, and I'm very excited that we have that Totally. Now. Yeah. Uh, final thoughts from me. It's uh, It's been a relatively quiet week as far as what I feel like we have to get into, but we, you guys were talking about your TV shows, you're watching, what you're binging. I found a new show, and I don't watch Ooh. many shows on TV. Like, the middle is ending. Um, Parks and Rec's been off for a while. I watch. I enjoy. I Mary Aubrey Plaza. I that's am. my. That's my. That's mm-hmm. my girl. Oh, yes. Her eyes are just so I'm the same point. way. So Par- she's Ooh. gorgeous. Parks and Rec is gone. Uh, the Office is gone. My favorite mm-hmm. shows. Like they the, bring the, back the Office. Well, yeah, but it won't be the same. Yeah, it won't. But so Adam Scott, mm-hmm. who played Ben Wyatt on Parks and Rec, yeah, and then mm-hmm. Daryl from yeah. The Office, Craig Craig Robinson, they've got a show on Fox called Ghosted. Well, it's not uh, going to be on yeah, that. Yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah. So it's uh, it's kind of like Men in Black, where mm. they're you know going. And I, I'm not into sci-fi crap at all. That is not my thing, Chase. There's really? n- that's yeah. not my deal at all. Yeah. Hmm. But it's like Men in Black. It's they're a both funny solid actress too. So that'd, yeah, that'd be, yeah. And they've got you know they pretty much play the same character you expect them to play. Uh, Craig Robinson. We talked on episode 46 about uh, how Jason Thompson is the world's worst when it comes to food, and being a, just a pain in the butt for stuff. That's Craig Robinson's character. He's basically Jason Thompson. Oh, great, yeah. And then uh, Adam Scott plays the same Ben Wyatt character as he always does. So, Very interesting. Kind of uh, nerdy. I, yeah, that. totally nerdy. Uh, got this thing for Batman, apparently. Uh, there's a little uh, Batman Yeah, well, he episode. did that in Parks and Rec. He had yeah. the part where he... Yeah, he uh, I, am, the, I am Batman. The trigger yourself. Yeah, he, yeah. Had the, uh, he started crying. Exactly. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> so, uh, my bride-to-be, Sarah Potter, the lovely Sarah Potter and I, binge-watched Ghosted a couple weeks ago. Okay. And uh, definitely give it a thumbs up. 10? 10 out of 10, worth your time. Uh, just running out of shows to watch. Is it, like Brooklyn uh, Nine Nine is good, and then uh, Ghost. What platform See, I've been is it on? About getting into that, it's on. Uh, it's on Fox. <clears throat> so the main Fox. But so you're you... not going to be able to watch it on Netflix. I I have it on YouTube TV. I subscribe to YouTube TV, and you yep. can get you know if you hit the season pass or whatever, it's on there. So I'm sure if you have any sort of DVR system, you should be able to go back and watch the recent episodes. It's the oh. first. It's the first year. There's like eight episodes in, and the guy that played Toby, who ran the office, Paul Lieberstein or whatever. He uh, he had it. Yep. So, uh, final thoughts. Those are my final thoughts. You can follow okay. me at Jeremiah Morrill. This you, Scotty. Yes, this is Scott. That's no, my final Scott, thoughts, Scotty. This is that's how we do it. Okay. You have uh, any final thoughts for the show? Yeah, I want to thank you again for. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> We've got uh, the iconic K-pop songs from Dakota. Thank you again for uh, inviting me. So, uh, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do for my final thoughts. Uh, Did we leave anything you? out? I don't think any so. stories? Any? Did you? Hopefully, you never can sign a petition <gasps> to get. Were you in South Korea when the uh, when the when the North Korea movie came out? When that whole controversy controversy I happened? Don't, I don't remember. The, the, I don't think so. That was like the year we graduated Seth high Rogan. school. There, yeah, it's been. <laughs> <laughs> You're so old. <laughs> that is that is a recent movie in my life. <laughs> really? That is not possible. Uh, what what was it called? The interview or something? Yeah, the interview. Yeah, okay. the interview. That was that Jeremiah. Was, if, it makes you feel better. I was in college during that time i was in college the most recent year i was in college was 2008 (laughs) dakota would have been 12 scott would have been 13 chase 2014 the day the year that i graduated high school that was a good movie yep um for my so he was not over there (laughs) no i was not i I went there in 2015 ridiculous thank you for getting for inviting me i don't 
really know what to do with my closing thoughts. Uh, hopefully, yeah. we can sign a petition for to get Fox News back. Oh, right, not Fox News. <laughs> uh, Fox. Fox back on the Netflix. On the Netflix. That's about the only issue I'm really passionate about. So, that's that's your driving force. And you if, don't care if, about the election. Hopefully, Aubrey Plaza listens to this, doesn't she? Yes, definitely. Okay, well, she does. If you if you need to, you can you can add me on Facebook. All. So you're tagged in the episode. Do you do, you do the Twitter, Instagram? I do. I, don't, I have Snapchat, uh, Instagram. Yeah, what's uh, your Instagram? Scott Fleener, uh, ninety five. Is it like a lot of lifting and stuff? Uh, it's not beach pictures. What do you do on the Instagram? I don't really post on Instagram Pets. too much. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You just follow. You just like it for creeping. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just basically I post stuff whenever I think to post stuff. <laughs> I haven't had Twitter in I don't know how long, and then Snapchat after the update, I just kind of pay attention to it. That's. Well, I'm glad last week they fixed that update, Chase, and now we got yeah. the old Instagram back. Yes, for sure. Very I don't have about Instagram, that. but I knew that. Mm. Um, I think we were talking about Snapchat, actually. Yeah, oh, Snapchat. Yeah, I do love Snapchat. <laughs> Snapchat? Snapchat? Snapface? Yeah, Snapface. that's the one. That's Man, what they changed it to. So, I, I, it's no secret I love the Craig Ferguson show. Always have. Mm-hmm. And uh, this has felt a lot like one of those shows where they were, the, the Friday show, they kind of double up Thursday to Friday. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying that we recorded this one early and punted we didn't but because that's not what happened you've been yeah. punked <laughs> but uh this has really felt felt like a craig ferguson show where you just you know you talk about that amazing thing that happened oh, yeah. yesterday definitely and happened. if you if you haven't joined the boss hog of liberty inner circle group then uh we got ratted out by my neighbor you did <sighs> uh zach bircham somewhere north of q avenue yep he said something is happening at the studio not sure what maybe planning yep. i told him that's what we're doing we're planning we are using the time machine the- yep we're using Past. the time machine. <laughs> we have, uh, there was this movie back in the 80s called mm. Back to the Future. And they had yeah, DeLorean. I know what the Back to the, the Future DeLorean is. The DeLorean had to go 88 miles an See, hour. I was, We've got a time machine at the Boss Hog Liberty Studios. Yeah. I was we thinking time of space. Hot Tub Time Machine <gasps> back in the day. Uh, and another like, Craig Robinson movie with Chevy Chase. I've never seen Hot Tub Time Machine. It's a good I haven't either. It's got kind of looked dumb. some sort of a hot. I never really tub liked that. That cast of actors <laughs> just yeah. like the whole like I feel like I need to be drunk to actually appreciate the movie. Yeah, exactly. Yes, drunk. You need to be drunk. Uh, or not anything else. Uh, Chase, any more scores? Or do, 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 do. This is the last one, Jeremiah. Last game of the night. Breaking news: Indiana just beat Kentucky one hundred to six. Oh my gosh! Was it a buzzer beater in the NIT? It was insane. A buzzer beater for the century. <laughs> uh, you got in the NIT and beat Kentucky, who is in the NCAA tournament. It's a miracle. It's All crazy, right. man. I don't know how it happened. Man. Next week, everybody, Susan Hoon. On a week from that, we're gonna have Butch Baker and then Betsy Mills. All the political shows. Enjoy. Thank you for listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Get our other shows at wearelibertarians.com. <laughs>